Why am I doing this? What is going on guys? It is Chris and fun fact, I actually had to turn my noise gate off just so I can get that to pick up on my microphone, but I digress. Today we have a sort of a special video because in my last video, I said that I was going to be taking the different Joy-Con alternatives that I've been using as well as the standard Joy-Cons and just doing a little like gameplay test to just show how those uh, Joy-Cons feel and function and things like that. And then this happened. I was looking at the Hori Split Pad Pro. When I was looking at the Hori Split Pad Pro, there was something else that showed up or that I saw that was interesting to me. Now, when I was getting the Hori Split Pad Pro, I wanted to wait and see what these different Joy-Cons had to offer. And then when I found them, before I even found these, I found another one. So today we are going to look at the programmable controller for NS. So as you can see, this is a similar styling to the original Hori Split Pad Pro. And the thing about this is that unlike the Hori Split Pad Pro, this has two programmable buttons on the back of each Joy-Con. But there's another one. If we thought there was just one, there's actually two. So this is similar to the other Joy-Cons and the Hori Split Pad Pro with the programmable buttons on the back. But this also has motion controls. So now we have the Hori Split Pad Pro that has the two buttons on the back. We have this that has two buttons, four buttons on the back in this case. And we have this that has four buttons on the back and has motion controls. So I'm really interested to see how these perform. And we're just gonna do a quick first impressions video. So we're gonna start with these. So these are pretty much the Hori Split Pad clone but they have additional buttons. So they're gonna function similarly to the Hori Split Pad, as in they don't have, uh, they do not have rumble and they do not have motion controls. So this is how they come to you in the box. And these come with a USB cable. So it comes with a quick start guide and here I want to try and find out what that uh, USB cable is for. I have an idea because I've been sort of following uh, these Joy-Cons in particular. And I want to see, but what I think that these are for is to upgrade the firmware in the controllers. And also this comes with a little warranty card. And you can see there, uh, Kylan, that's the... Uh, company that's selling these, um, this is actually made by Adobe. Um, that same um, controller that I showed with the uh, swappable thumbsticks, this is the same company that makes them and they call this their TNS19210. Um, I think they should have it on, okay, so it doesn't say it on the back of the Joy-Con, so I thought it would, so. Let's just get these out of the packaging and see how they feel. Immediately, what I'm noticing is the button placements for these back buttons are in a perfect place, in my opinion. Like, if you see how my hands are resting, they're pretty much perfectly over uh, the buttons themselves. So let's just get these on to my switch so I can see how it feels when I'm actually connected to it. So before I do that, I just wanted to do a quick size comparison so you can see the sizing difference. Uh, for the most part, they're pretty similar in size. Um, let me see if I can lay this out a little better. Uh, so yeah, these are pretty similar in size. Um, and the it was nice that they were able to fit a second button on the back of these. Um, so 
That's nice. These sticks feel pretty good, actually. Just from using them, they have a texture that's similar to the Xbox One's thumbsticks. So hopefully the stick calibration is better on these than the previous um, Joy-Cons. So now I got these on here and a few things I noticed that first, the connection to the switch is actually pretty tight. And then if I try and flex the Joy-Con itself, it's actually pretty sturdy. So I gotta give them props. Like they made a really sturdy connection and um, the belt is actually pretty good. And the one thing I really like about this is see how it sits flat with the switch. Um, that's one of my like slight gripes that I have with the Horse Flip Head Pro. The only downside to this is if I put this in the dock, I pretty much can't use my USB ports. Um, so that's probably what I'm giving up with that. So let me just try and see if I can turn this on. And so yeah, so this is works just like the Split Head Pro. I cannot use the home button to turn it on. I have to turn this on with the power button. And I can get into my games just like that. All right, so I had a chance to test these out for a few minutes. I've just been playing Overwatch and just so you can see um, how it's functioning in game. It's a little bit weird. I can't really like show it this way. Um, but the one thing that I will say is that these are really comfortable in my hands. So when I was holding these in my hands, the way that the grip is molded on the back, I can show you that like there, this is sort of closer to the, uh, the Dolby, um, controller. Uh, it's sort of closer to that one. And it's, it makes sense because it's made by the same people. Um, so this grip is really in line with that. And I really enjoyed that grip. And then com combined with the, uh, buttons being placed in a really good position. Um, I could probably just play um, games with this in this setup and not really have to deal with a lot of comfort issues. So I just want to see how the other joy cons compare to these ones, because those have a few more features on it than these do. So I want to see if that sort of helps it a little bit more, or if these feel a little bit better and sort of get an idea of how those are going to be. Okay. One more thing. Uh, I wanted to show you guys how this uh, USB cable works because as you can see here, it has a little slot in it. And what I figured out is this should slot into the bottom part of the Joy-Con because this is where it plugs into the switch. So I believe it connects, should connect the other way around. Okay, so it connects like this. And I bet this is how they would use it to uh, do updates to the controller. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to that. I'm going to see what type of things they offer for like updates and stuff. But that's just sort of interesting because these don't have a battery in it. So it's not like you can charge the controller this way. So I'm going to have to figure out what that's going to be all about. Okay, so now let's get into these Joy-Cons. Here's the one thing that I'm noticing when I'm trying out all these different Joy-Cons. It's really hard to figure out like the proper name to call them because there's no like actual brand. Like Dolby is technically a brand, but they don't have like specific um, product names for their like stuff. And they just use code names and stuff, which is kind of weird when you try to explain it that way. And then the worst part is a lot of the times when I'm trying to find it, like I didn't find this i got this on Amazon and I got both of these on Amazon and I couldn't find it by it's like product code name. I basically just had to search, um, a joy con with programmable buttons on Amazon. And that's how that works. But let's get into this one. And this one is a little bit different. Um, this looking at it, right now okay so this is 
This is a little weird. So this one comes with a USB-C cable. Um, they have USB-C ports on the bottoms of the controllers. So that's a way to connect them. Um, it does come with this cool grip. I know it shows on the box, but I just wanted to see how this sort of feels in my hand. It's sort of nice. And then the same thing with the buttons on here. These actually fit um, and they fit like right into my hands with the way the grip is set up. I can actually press the buttons in the same grip that I use to hold the controller. Now, the one thing that I'm immediately noticing is that for the sticks, as you can see there, it looks really small and it is actually a similar style stick to the uh, Joy-Cons, like the standard Joy-Cons. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm guessing that's how they were able to get both the um, buttons and the uh, motion controls and the gyro in there. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, but yeah, so like this is styled similar to the Joy-Con, like the standard Joy-Con layout. Cause you can see here, the sticks are laying right on top of the buttons and I'm not sure if I'm like looking at this weird or not. Let me see if I can try and show that off. But it looks like this stick is like slightly off to the, I guess further out, like compared to, compared to this or even the Hori uh, Joy-Con. See, this is more offset towards the inside of the Joy-Con, whereas this one is offset more towards the outside. And that is gonna come into play when I'm just playing games that require me using the thumbstick because it means that my fingers or my thumb is going to be in a really weird spot. But let's just get these off of here. So that one's on. Then we have this one on. Now let's see if this one so this one does connect to the, as you can see there, it paired both of the Joy-Cons themselves, but this one will turn on your switch from the home button. Um, I think that has to do with the battery. Let me see if these do have, yeah, so these do have a battery belt into them. So I guess that sort of makes sense. These are sort of more closer to the standard Joy-Cons, so. First impressions, like holding it in the hand, it definitely feels like a little bit more cramped um, just because it is a smaller profile, but it does have the grips built onto them. So it does make it holding it a little bit better. Um, I can still sort of like grip the back buttons and still have my fingers on the sticks i'm really interested to see how these sticks are actually going to feel like in game um because these are looking like the standard uh joy con thumbsticks which as we all know can be sometimes problematic so let's just get in to a game okay so i had a few minutes to test this out and as you see i got it my game going right there and I'm going to be completely honest. The sticks feel pretty good. Um, in terms of sensitivity, they don't feel too sensitive, but it doesn't feel like with the other sticks I was having, like the way that it feels is that it's not um, like the sort of like precision that I get. It sort of like jumps around over, all over the place. But with this, it feels like it's sort of just sticking, like, I'm gonna try and show this um, if this is possible. This is gonna be really janky, so I apologize in advance, but I'm just gonna show how these sticks uh, actually work in game. I'm just gonna show how these sticks work in general. So right now I got the calibrate the control stick, so we're just gonna do this one. And so 
as you can see there, it still moves and it sort of just like sticks to the edges. So like the way that it works is that it sort of locks to these four axes. So I don't know if it's the height of the sticks that's making it feel a lot more manageable, but for some reason, uh, it's when I'm playing in game, it feels like uh, they're not really sticking as much as the other sticks are. I don't really know how to describe it, but uh, what I can say is these sticks surprise me and how they functioned in the game. Um, I thought they were going to be really like unwieldy, unwieldy, unwieldy. I thought they were going to be really unwieldy and okay. One more thing before I go, um, I just wanted to show you guys is is the standard uh, control freak for the Nintendo Switch. This is actually the original ones that they released for uh, the Nintendo Switch. And as you can see here, this does fit on these sticks and it raises the profile of it a bit and it comes off, it's pretty loose on there. So it's not as tight. The newer ones I think have a little bit of a tighter grip on there, but the thing that I notice is that when I'm using this, the issue that I had with using these control freaks on my standard Joy-Cons was that there wasn't enough room in between the top buttons and the stick. So I was having trouble hitting the stick when I meant to press the buttons. This is a little bit better spaced out so I could actually use this stick. But if you're having control freaks. If you have these control freaks, then you could use it on these Joy-Cons if you did get these. Um, and if you wanted to use the newer ones, any of the Nintendo Switch uh, control freaks that are made for the Joy-Cons themselves will work on this. Personally, I think I have to try these out for uh, quite a bit more time before I can sort of say like, or give a definite opinion on like how I feel about the controllers and whatnot. So this is gonna be a little bit longer than I thought. I don't think I'm going to get to actually showing off uh, gameplay just yet, but I will do that because at this point, there's so many more options that I thought that actually look really good. So I'm just going to try these out and see how they actually work. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys look forward to the next videos that I'm doing in this sort of video series. I'm promising I'm not going to turn into like a Nintendo Switch tech YouTuber because that's not really what I want to do. I just got these and I wanted to make a video on these because uh, this is something really cool. There's more Joy-Con options for your Nintendo Switch. so it's better to have more options than not. So I wanted to sort of go over those and just give you guys that information. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below what you think, and subscribe to see more videos from me. But as always, guys, this is Chris, and I'll see you later.